What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So the other day, Nintendo issued a bit of a warning to Switch owners that I didn't really think was too big of a deal, but many people did message me about this asking what they should do, and I fear we go over it here today. Also, we are going to be talking about Microsoft and their acquisition of Activision Blizzard, as it looks like it could be wrapping up here soon, which of course has led people to the next acquisition. And we are also going to be talking about God of War Ragnarok. It's slated to be coming out November 9th, but it turns out their original plans were a bit different. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're going to start today with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, specifically that special edition that just consistently crashes Nintendo's website whenever they have it listed. Well, people in the, the UK and parts of Europe and all this have been wondering when they'll get a shot at pre-ordering this special edition. Turns out it's going to be after the game launches. Take a look at this. This posted up over on Nintendo Life with an email that was going out to kind of address this matter, saying due to unforeseen logistical challenges, we are unable to open pre-orders for the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Collector's Edition before the game launches on July 29th. Again, this is for UK and parts of Europe. They say we apologize for any inconvenience caused to give customers the flexibility to purchase and enjoy the game at launch. We will now be offering the contents of the collector's edition, soft cover, concept art book, the steel case, all this as a separate purchase at a price that does not include Xenoblade Chronicles 3 software. That way, of course, if you just want to buy the game in, uh, what, two weeks, you can do that and then just pay, I guess, the difference. We'll see what the pricing actually is when they do launch pre-orders uh, later on this year. But it does kind of bring up the thought process around these special editions that we're seeing a bit differently now than maybe even last generation, where with something like God of War, it doesn't even come with the disc. It's just a code. And I've wondered if, we should just get to a point with special editions where it, they just doesn't include the game. You just buy the extra contents and that's what you're getting. You can buy the game separately if you want. And of course the price reflects it. But as we come to know with a lot of these companies, the price doesn't always reflect that. However, I guess this is the best thing Nintendo can do here. And I think a lot of this has to do with the changes around the release for this being moved up. Unfortunately, while the game will be there and ready to go on July 29th, the contents around the special edition uh, in UK parts of Europe will not be. So I guess, hey, if you're looking for that, pick up the game later on this month and then keep an eye out for whenever pre-orders go live for the special edition. Also, we did have reviews go live for two games yesterday. We'll start with the first one, that being Stray. We can see here over on Metacritic, currently sitting at an 84, which I think is pretty good for Stray. Uh, we can see the split between critics, 59 positive, 10 mix, this being on the PlayStation 5. I had a chance to take a look at a couple of reviews and I will admit the game looks a bit different than I was originally picturing from that first trailer and it appears it's not as much of a platformer as I was thinking. There's no actual jump button in the game, which seems kind of strange for a game where you play as a cat. However, when you look at different ledges and you then press the cross button, you will jump to that ledge. They did have quests that were set up in the game, different collectibles and things to do, obviously, from like the cat's perspective, which for cat lovers, you're going to want to pick this game up. But I am interested in kind of the unique concept of Stray, so I will certainly be checking it out uh, later on today. Now, the other game is As Dusk Falls, and we can see the Metacritic score for it here. This did release on uh, the Xbox and everything through Game Pass, and it coming in at a 76. The split currently 38 positive, 14 mixed, 2 negative, and... From what I've seen in the different reviews, like IGN gave it just a nine and a lot of that had to do with the narrative driven experience and just the overall story and branching paths being genuinely interesting and fun to follow. Uh, but I think the biggest turn off for people is that art style that just looks kind of strange. Some people were saying they were just getting sick from it, but I guess if you're fine with how it looks, it sounds like there is a pretty good overarching story involved here, and you can technically play with a bunch of people all at once, kind of like the, a party atmosphere, if you will, where everyone will sort of guess or, or I guess just vote on uh, the different decisions to make and just sort of see where it takes you. But there you have it. Stray looking pretty good in that regard, and then as does 
Dusk Falls, I will admit from the initial reaction to the art style, not bad there either. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo issuing a bit of a warning currently for Switch owners. Now, this was in Japan, and a lot of that's because uh, it's very, very hot there currently. And in fact, in many parts of the world, it's very hot right now, especially on like my Twitter timeline. I always see people mentioning the temperature being over 100 degrees Fahrenheit where they are. And of course, it's going to depend where you are in the world. Uh, around me, it's not bad. It's like 75 to 85 degrees most days. So I'm comfortable enough. And I guess also it depends on if you have central air and, and all of this too. Well, Nintendo decided to take to social media and link people to a page around the Switch and its operating temperatures. We can see this posted up. This over on their Q&A, their frequently asked questions translated using good old Google Translate. And this seems to be from people asking Nintendo why their Switch is shutting off. And yeah, that technically could be because the, the ambient temperature is just higher than usual, right? So the main body becomes hot is a malfunction. And they go on to give sort of a range for the temperature the switch should be operated in. In fact, they say, hey, your temperature may be too high, using a place between five to 35 degrees Celsius, which for Fahrenheit, that'd be a, a roof of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. They also show off the back and then kind of the top of the switch there, pointing out both the intake and the exhaust uh, spots for the switch. Now, I did a test a while ago. Maybe this is why so many people were messaging me about it. I did a test where I, had, I purposefully attempted to suffocate the switch, find out where the shutoff was for it. Because if your switch does turn off, well, if your switch gets too hot, it will turn off. But that can be because there is blockage around those vents. But it can be because you're playing it in 100 some odd degree temperatures, which probably isn't very comfortable as it is to kind of sit down and play your switch. But in the dock, I would say it would probably be warmer than if it was out of it and then if you do have blockage in that behind the heat sink within your switch and then on top of it being higher than usual temperatures yeah you can have your switch turn off on you which is actually a safety measure the switch has to keep it from getting too hot and many people were asking me what they should do and if it's even safe to play their switch there's really not much you can do if it's just hot where you are and where you're playing your switch i mean you can kind of shorten the overall play time so like you play for an hour let your switch rest for a bit and then you can play again rather than just have one long eight hour session of breath of the wild that may actually beat up your switch pretty good and yeah it might even shut itself down although I had to work pretty hard to shut my switch down, putting a towel over it, even unplugging the fan to finally get it to, to shut down due to thermal limits. So for the most part, I think you'll be okay even if you have extended play sessions. Just be aware that your switch in 95 degree plus weather yeah, might be going through a bit of a harder time than usual. So just kind of keep an eye on it, maybe uh, check in on it here and there as you go. And if you need to, give, give it a bit of a rest and shorten those play times until hopefully it gets a bit cooler where you are. Next up, let's talk about some new games heading to Xbox Game Pass being headlined with the day one release. We can see the card that they put out here over on news.xbox.com, starting with as Dusk Falls, that's cloud console and PC, it is available today. And this is a game that, I think it actually makes sense through cloud considering there's not much when it comes to reaction time or anything there. You're just sort of going through the story and making different decisions. And you know what? That would work pretty well with like the touch screen interface even. So not, not bad there for a day one release even into the cloud. And then also same day today, Watch Dogs 2, cloud, console, and PC. I mean, the Watch Dogs game specifically too was fun. I, they're dropping it into Game Pass, so there you go. You could you could check it out. Then moving to July 21st, Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. That's uh, PC ID at Xbox. Then we also have MotoGP 22 Cloud Console and PC. Torment Tides of Numenera. That's Cloud and Console. Then moving up to July 29th, we have Inside. That's Cloud Console and PC. That is a really cool atmospheric game, and I completely recommend this one. It's it's something you won't really play anywhere else, at least this style of game. So make sure you check out Inside, a pretty cool addition there. Overall, while this is kind of a, a limited number of titles to close out July with the, the randomness of a Watch Dogs 2 getting thrown in there, I do think it's good to have As Dusk Falls going into Game Pass Day 1, since there are a lot of people, I'm sure, who are unsure if they would enjoy the game or not. I mean, if you're really into a story being told in a game, this is 
probably right up your alley. But otherwise, it's good to have in Game Pass so you can just kind of download it and try it out and see if you can stomach the art style or if you can even get into the story itself. Also, the idea of it being a party game where you can sync up apparently your cell phones to act as controllers and make decisions on each screen, that's kind of a fun idea, especially if no one in the room talks to each other when it comes to making decisions and you just kind of see where the room takes the story. That well, could be interesting there. Um, but I will once again recommend Inside. I just think it's a, a pretty interesting experience. And again, something that a lot of people probably would have maybe missed out on it going to Game Pass. We'll at least give it some more exposure there. Next up, let's talk about the biggest deal in gaming. And that is, of course, Microsoft working to acquire Activision Blizzard for like $70 billion. It was a massive announcement when it happened. Certainly the internet just exploded in discussion. What's this mean for the overall landscape of things like Call of Duty? And it looks like we could have this deal close before the end of this year, we can see this post up over on BGC, where they say Microsoft's ongoing acquisition of Activision Blizzard could be approved by the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, as soon as next month. The FTC asked Microsoft and Activision Blizzard for additional information in March as a to review their proposed acquisition deal. As noted by the FTC's own guidance, this means the body now has 30 days to challenge the acquisition. Otherwise, the deal can continue this after the necessary documents were provided. Now, there is one other, uh, there is one other commission that is currently looking into this deal, that being the CMA or Competition and Markets Authority that's in the UK. They have a deadline of September 1st to give its initial decision on the matter and I guess if it goes through there and the FTC is all right we could see this thing wrap up before the holiday maybe even in September or October and after that people have wondered what's next no seriously we're, we're talking about this massive deal right like the, them buying Activision Blizzard for 70 billion dollars and now people are wondering if Microsoft is going to buy Netflix no, no, seriously take a look at this this was posted up over on Yahoo and this is from an analyst who is essentially like yelling at Netflix and Microsoft over it saying, do you guys think we're dumb? <laughs> you Clearly there's something else going on here. This has to do with Netflix choosing Microsoft to help roll out its new ad supported offering. If you're unaware, Netflix has been struggling. That's to put it lightly. I mean, their stock crashed, their whole value of the company crashed like 25 to 30% in a single day. And a lot of this is because they started to have a downturn when it comes to subscribers, which is something that's like never really happened for Netflix in the past. And they're basically scrambling, looking for answers. One of them has to do with them apparently running ads for a lower subscription fee. Now this analyst, Laura Martin says, it could be that Netflix is looking for an exit when commenting on the current deal between Netflix and Microsoft proposing that the streaming giant might be making a long-term play to be acquired by Microsoft. Netflix is trying to get closer to Microsoft in hopes that after Microsoft digests its Activision acquisition, it turns and buys Netflix next. Now, why in the world would Microsoft want to buy Netflix if they're struggling so much? Well, the thing with Microsoft that's kind of interesting is every time they're making these acquisitions, they're kind of doing it when the company they're basically targeting is struggling badly. I mean, look what happened with Activision Blizzard. I don't really have to get into that one with how their stock really fell after everything was going on with the lawsuit. And it seemed like Activision was having a hard time getting any game out that wasn't Call of Duty because they were pulling so many studios off to work on just that one franchise. You look at Bethesda and uh, and ZeniMax, we, Fallout 76 was really ugly for uh, for that company. So now you think, would Microsoft really make a play on Netflix? They're partnering for their ads and the technology that would fuel that. And it is possible that Microsoft could look towards Netflix as being part of their overarching metaverse play. They mentioned that with Activision Blizzard, that being a key factor in this. And the idea is to gobble up as many entertainment platforms as possible to build like the, the singular internet hotspot, essentially, where everyone will go to hang out. And if they own Netflix, as well as all these different gaming properties, you kind of bring it all together under this entertainment umbrella. But there's still a lot of questions surrounding this, like how much would it even cost to buy Netflix? That's something that people are already arguing back and forth online that it could actually be worth 
more than the Activision Blizzard deal there, and uh, who knows? We'll, we'll see. First, though, they have to wrap up this Activision Blizzard deal, and then I guess they're already partnering with Netflix. Maybe that is a long-term thing, but something tells me they're not going to then announce the Netflix deal immediately after the Activision deal closes. That's something we'll probably hear about in the next couple of years. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about God of War Ragnarok. It is currently slated to release November 9th. We had like the special editions go up. Those sold out and they're already being sold on eBay for like twice the value. But there was something odd that happened around the time of the reveal for those special editions. There was a trailer that was uploaded by PlayStation and then pulled down after maybe a minute or two because it showed the wrong release date. And Take a look at this because, of course, the internet doesn't forget. People are able to grab screenshots and even full clips of that video. There's the release date that I guess was originally planned. It's November 11th, which, uh, well, that would be the day that Starfield was supposed to release. And it's not even like they accidentally typed it into the tweet. No, no, it, they, they accidentally photoshopped it onto the image next to the box art for the PS5 and the PS4. Let's go a bit further here. Jason Schreier did comment over on Recent Era where he said, I heard after the announcement that it was indeed planned for November 11th and that the sudden release change to November 9th was why they bumped back the announcement from June 30th to the week after. Not 100% sure why they moved it. I think it was more a logistical thing rather than anything to do with Starfield. It would be kind of weird if they decided at the last minute to change from Starfield's date to the 9th just because they, did, I don't know, they, they didn't want to poke fun at Microsoft or something. Like, to me, that doesn't make any sense there. Although, let's be real, if they announced that it was coming out November 11th, Twitter would have exploded. I mean, there would have been arguing and discussion all over the place with that one. Maybe they really did look at Wednesday and like, oh, we could make that work. And it's Odin's day. That uh, falls in line with the overall concept of the game itself. So it's a nice touch. I... Who knows? That we'll never we'll probably never have this explained to us because it wasn't supposed to get out there in the first place. But either way, apparently they were going to release it on the 11th. And what an interesting timeline that would have been if there was no Starfield delay and God of War Ragnarok released on November 11th alongside of it. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, do you typically buy big special editions of games? 54% said yes, but only if it's a game I'm really interested in. 45% said no, I'm not really interested in the extra stuff. And then 2% said yes, I buy them all the time for big releases. I knew a couple of people like that back when I work at the stores. They'd come in and I knew they were there to order whatever the next big special edition was. They just picked up all of them. Uh, but I wonder if that 45% where they're just not interested in the extra stuff will continue to grow over time because we already know we're trending towards a future where it's all digital releases and that's it. It feels like if you commit to just a digital library, why do you want to the 16 inch replica of Mjolnir, all this extra stuff, a steel book, right? It doesn't, doesn't make too much sense to me to even have that around. So I kind of wonder if we will get to a point maybe 10 years from now where there's just no physical special editions. We just have digital special editions. That'd be, be an interesting future. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Golly saying, gotta love it. We went from being over the moon excited for Skate 4 to the EA Skate situation gets worse. That has to be some kind of world record. It's, I mean, it's something I feel like most of us had in the back of our mind when we saw it announced. We're like, how is EA going to monetize this one, right? And I, even I wasn't expecting them to go full free to play with it in a mobile game. That, very deflating from what they were talking about there. But then they said new loot boxes. Like, all right, no loot boxes. We'll see how they deal with it. And then data mining happens. And oh, wait, there's loot boxes, or I'm sorry, swag bags. And now it's like, well, that's, that's it. This, this is going to get ugly, I think, with the monetization. Well, we'll see. But the thing I will at least say is looking through the comments for that video, people are disappointed, but they're also still very hopeful. So if anything, I hope the studio working on this now with the veterans for the skate team can at least figure out a way to make this work with, I'm sure, the structure that EA 
feels like they need for a game like Skate, which is, yeah, free to play on mobile and I'm sure monetized like crazy. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was Nintendo's warning for Switch owners with the heat going on right now. Let me know if you've experienced any issues in excess heat with your Switch. And then also, what about Microsoft, Activision, Blizzard, and then Netflix. Do you think Microsoft is going to be interested in picking up Netflix after they're done acquiring Activision? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.